Fixed-wing transports have their own priorities and process. We'll talk about initiation of transport, the aircraft, the equipment that you'll use on the aircraft, loading and unloading a patient with an isolate and a peed stretcher, as well as patient care concerns while on a fixed-wing transport. The initiation of a fixed-wing transport is a very hands-on process. The process is covered in Appendix A, Item 2 of the Policy and Procedure. Management needs to know when these types of transports are requested, and typically most of this is managed by them, whoever is on call. But you will need to assist in getting information at their request. These transports, like all the others, start with the collection of, of information on a referral form, which you can go ahead and begin getting when you get the call for the transport. In addition to the regular information you're going to get, you want to get the passenger's weight, which is typically the mom, and then the referring facility's phone number, as sometimes we do not get these calls from the facility where the patient is actually going to be transported from. You also need to keep the referring and the receiving hospital staff informed on the progress of the transport. Every time you land, or before you leave the ground, you should think about calling the referring or the receiving. PD Flight, for the better part of 15 or 20 years now, has had a relationship doing fixed wing transports with Aeromed Express. They are out of Rogers, Arkansas, and can be in the Memphis area in about an hour. Mike Mosier, the pilot for Aeromed Express, flies a Mitsubishi Diamond Jet, which works really well for any fixed wing transport that we would need. When the transport is confirmed, you need to coordinate with the EMT on the ambulance and be sure of its availability to get the patient and or the crew to and from the airport which is typically Crittenden County at West Memphis or Wilson Air at the Memphis Air Center by the airport. The bags and medical equipment used on a fixed wing transport are the same as a rotor or ground. The difference is it's in the mounting system in the fixed wing aircraft. It uses a life port sled system, which means you need to use the right isolate or the peed stretcher when you do these transports. In either case, you need to carry the clip deck. The clip deck folds in half and allows you to mount the isolate or the life port peed stretcher on a conventional stretcher. The handle release for the life port sled mount system is illustrated here. The aircraft also has several pieces of minor equipment as well as things that you'll be able to access and use for the transport such as oxygen, an electrical power system with an inverter, suction, an air compressor for compressed medical gas. You also need to be aware of and monitor for gas leaks when you're in the aircraft to make sure that you, you don't lose gas because of leaks. The next part of this is a video walkthrough of the aircraft with different parts labeled so you can get oriented to the interior. As you enter the aircraft, you have the bench seat for the family member. You have a oxygen valve which is down below where the life port stretcher mounts. It's just a typical oxygen handle for a cylinder. You've got an emergency exit, which is above the sled. It's a, one of the window pieces that comes out. Electrical power is in the floor underneath the um, life point port mount. You've got three or four outlets for electrical power. You also have air in O2 as well as suction. And a storage compartment where an O2 flow meter and sharps container and the like is. 
there's a fire extinguisher in the rear of the lifeboat stretcher mount, as well as additional storage. Remember that everything needs to be stored and tied down. There's also a temperature and thermostat control, and the cabin door is usually managed by the pilot or co-pilot. There's a video here that illustrates the loading and unloading of the stretcher into the aircraft. You need to make sure that you follow the pilot's directions and that you monitor the patient during the move. And if your patient is ambulatory, they can walk onto the aircraft, but if they're in pain or physically unable to do so, then you obviously will need to use the stretcher. You want to make sure that you monitor the patient during the move and after, and that includes everything attached, such as ET tubes, infusion pumps, IVs, the vent circuit, ET tube, those sorts of things to make sure that nothing's become loose or dislodged. After you do a few of these, you'll notice that most of your changes in the patient's vital signs occur on ascent or descent which is basically an adjustment in the um, change in altitude. The aircraft is pressurized to 7,000 feet. You will fly typically at 30, 35,000 feet to overcome the air resistance because the air is so much thinner. And it's a good idea to re review the flight physiology module in this training because there are differences in fixed wing that you will not have in um, other types of transport. It is almost impossible to get a hold of medical control once you are airborne, so make sure that you have any orders or potential orders that you may need already verified before you leave. It's worth mentioning again here that you want to make sure that everything inside the aircraft is secure and tied down. You also want to allay the parents' fears. Some of these parents have never flown before, and it's a whole new experience. And being inside of a small jet, you feel the bumps and the sways a lot more than you do in a commercial jet. Also remember that your ability to communicate will be greatly limited because it is so loud inside the aircraft during flight. Also make sure you wear your seat belt and that the parent has theirs on as well and they may need help with this. That should cover the basics of fixed wings. Thank you and have a good flight.